There are two ways that layers in a GIS can be visualized on a map. One is the vector layer and the other is the raster layer. Raster layers are organized in a grid of identically sized cells. In this slide, the Im this image is an example of a raster layer. Okay? The cells have a uniform length and width that are square shaped. Um, these are called pixels. Okay? Each cell has its own individual attribute data. Now, common ones are satellite images and aerial photos. Uh, these are types of raster layers where each cell displays uh, what light wavelength is emitted or reflected from that location. Or, you know, if it helps you, uh, maybe just like the average color or uh, grayscale that is coming from that location. Other examples of raster layers um, would probably be like temperature, uh, elevation, um, those type of things. Uh, satellites or aerial rasters are the most common. Really that's no surprise, um, but they're pretty much just a picture uh, taken from the air that is geographically referenced. However, resolution, the pixel size, in other words, is a big concern. Pay attention. This will show up on a test or a quiz. Because a pixel is square, the relationship of that square with the real on the ground distance is very important. If you have a raster with a 12 inch resolution, basically one pixel is the size of a standard floor tile, one square foot. Now, depending on how much detail you need in a raster, particularly an aerial raster, um, you know, that may be good enough and it may not be. Uh, we're going to take a quick look at an example of the difference between a 12 inch resolution and a 6 inch resolution. These screenshots I'm using uh, here are a good example. I came across doing some GIS work uh, with Williams County data. Since plagiarism is not tolerated, I will cite the following quote from focalflight.com. Okay, I didn't have to look it up. I just came across it and determined it was an excellent description. So, quote, 12-inch resolution is the industry standard for most archived large area image databases, including Google Earth. Now, I should clarify here that Google Earth is not consistently this resolution. Um, just in the bigger cities uh, is the resolution that good. Continuing on. It displays much more detail than one meter resolution. Details that can be seen at this resolution include vehicles, roads, and some markings, individual crop rows, large trees, and details on buildings. Six inch resolution is considered a high resolution for aerial photography. This resolution is occasionally available from archives, but is usually produced on a custom basis. The details that are visible at this resolution include individual small trees and plants, individual vines and other crops, vehicle types, power poles, and other infrastructure details, road markings, and lettering. But as I mentioned before, rasters are also used for elevation layers. Okay? Now, you won't see this so much in aerial layers uh, because all aerials are for is just for a visual reference. Okay? But elevations or rasters are going to be important because each cell in that raster is going to have attribute data tied into it. Um, and if it's for elevation, it's going to be assigned a Z value, which is um, how many feet or meters in elevation that particular cell represents. Uh, we cover this in Chapter 5, Part D of your Getting to Know ArcGIS book, if you want to take a peek. And Pixel size is also important uh, in an elevation raster because y you need to consider that it's going to be the average elevation of that cell size, okay? So if, uh, in rasters, sometimes they're going to be three foot uh, cell size, okay? So it's going to be the average elevation of that three foot square, okay? Of course, the smaller the cell size, the more, uh, the, the better results you're going to have in that raster layer. Um, now going back to the screenshot I've got here, um, take a look at the 12 inch uh, image, the raster image, and the 6 inch. Okay, 
and just observe that there's a, a lot more clarity in the 6 inch. You can see more of the details. Um, also you might note though, if you've got a sharp eye, that in the 12 inch and the 6 inch, the shadows are pointing in different directions. Um, well, there you go Sherlock. Uh, they're taken on two different days. Actually these two images are actually taken two separate years. Um, now keep in mind that these aren't supposed to be the same picture. It's the same area split in half. One half has a 12 inch, the other half has a 6 inch. Just to clarify. Okay, vector layers. And get this one down. These are represented as points, lines, and polygons. Okay, points, lines, and polygons. A vector layer cannot mix types together. Okay, one layer cannot have a point and a polygon in the same layer. Okay. The layer would have to be split into two separate layers. One for points, one for polygons. The bottom image of this slide is an example of at least three separate vector layers forming a single image. Remember, these are more or less like on transparent layers, so you can stack them together to make a uniform image. Okay. Example of vector layers would include uh, bus stops as a point, roads as a line, would be like the road center lines actually counties as a polygon now while it is true and in some cases reasonable to have roads represented by polygons since a road does have a measurable width as well as a length just consider that polygons will lose their impact as the scale changes um, as you pull away from the ground those polygons are going to constantly get smaller till they're they're sm so small they're not they're not legible, okay? In which case that's where you would begin to use points or lines instead. Let me use this as an example. Um, take an US interstate map, okay? You look along the map scale at the bottom and determine that one inch equals 100 miles. Now take your ruler and measure the width of the line that represents an interstate. Now you do a little math because you're really good at it and determine that interstates are commonly three miles wide according to the scale. Now that seems a little ridiculous. But, I mean, if you think about it, it is, I guess, arguable that it proves that this map is lying, okay? I mean, we don't have interstate highways that are three miles wide. But maps sometimes uh, have to lie in order to be functional. By the same token, if cities remained as polygons on a U.S. map, it would be unreasonable to expect someone to decipher the boundaries of even the largest cities. This slide shows five distinct but related data layers. We're looking at a national map, if maybe you're just listening. Uh, the capital cities, um, the layer here is a point vector layer. The roads and rivers uh, are examples of line vector layers. And the lakes and states are example of polygon vector layers. When the five data layers from the previous slide are loaded into a digital map, they combine into this one image. Each layer is still separate and can be turned on and off individually. The legend on the left side of the image shows the order of the images. Okay, The states layer is at the bottom, it's the base layer, uh, while the US capitals layer is at the top. The layer order determines how the map draws the image, with the top layers being drawn on top of the other layers below it. If the states layer was moved to the top of the order, it would cover everything else, and uh, nothing else would be visible, uh, except for maybe the Great Lakes, because those are just outside those polygon boundaries. 